Uh, welcome to another episode of Bricks and Dragons. Uh, we're here today with Todd Albert. He's uh, the owner of Boca Code. Um, you, you want, I guess we'll start by uh, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. What does Boca Code do and who, who's your customer? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, so I'm Dr. Todd Albert. I was a college professor for a number of years, and then I, I left academia to go into software engineering. And there was just, you know, a, a dearth of, of talent. You, there was a huge gap, I should say, in, in the jobs, you know, the number of jobs versus how many, how many applicants, like, you know, almost six to one ratio here in South Florida. So I was hiring people in various roles out of, out of some of the code schools out of New York and Miami, but we really didn't have any comprehensive training here. So, so that's what we do. We, uh, we're, we're a code school first and foremost, and we train adults to be successful software engineers. We have classes in, in a lot various topics, short courses that people can take to upskill their, their career. Even, even those who aren't software engineers, we have some introductory or all levels courses. And then for some of the people who are more advanced, we have very advanced courses, but our bread and butter is our software engineering course where, you know, essentially requires no former, no former knowledge. And you come out the other side being a, a software engineer, you know, with, where you can make a, you know, 108K a year salary on average. And, uh, you know, so that's what we do. We also take on development work for small companies. This way our, our teaching staff gets to work on real projects. Our students get to work on those projects with us. And, you know, so we get to collaborate with our students and they get to really learn hands-on how to build real projects. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. Our customer, man, our customer is, is pretty much anyone. We get, we get customers from, you know, pretty much right out of high school to, you know, I've got a, an older retired gentleman who has a PhD in computer science from many years ago. And he decided he wanted to get back into programming and just wanted to learn the latest stack. So he's come here to, to brush up. So, you know, we teach them 18 to 81 and, uh, you know, you could come from service industry, you could come from, you know, restaurant, wherever, whatever, you know, we, we take anyone, as long as you know how to use a computer and, you know, you're pretty savvy about getting around a computer, being able to copy paste, switch between applications quickly. We could, we could train you to be a software engineer. That's, that's awesome. And I, I think that there's a lot of misconceptions around, um, who can become a software engineer, and and I think it's 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 uh, awesome. You're making it accessible for everybody. And yeah, that's. I mean, that is a really important part of our mission. Is is there's a lot of people who don't grow up in households or in communities where they're told, you know, hey, this is an option, and and so we're really trying to target a lot of those people, whether it's whether it's women, whether it's people from the Black or Latinx communities, whether it's people from the deaf community or other other underserved communities in technology and underrepresented. So we have scholarships available for a lot of different, um, you know, to help diversify the tech field here in South Florida. Amazing. And what, what was the catalyst for you kind of making the leap to become a business owner? Yeah, you know, it was, it was really, well, I was a business owner before this. This isn't my first venture. Um, when I, you know, I was really fortunate in that my first job in software engineering, I worked hand in hand with the um, with the entrepreneur, with the with the owner of the company. He actually gave me a piece of the company, a large piece of the company. Then we ended up merging with another company where I got to work, you know, hand in hand with the owners there. And it really gave me that, you know, that drive to to do things on my own. I was I worked really hard for many years to help make other people rich, and I decided, you know, I want to I want to do this for myself. So I started my own agency and, you know, when I had an agency, which I run with two other people, we ended up developing our own software product, but the talent, finding the talent was always a challenge. And that was, that was really the impetus to, to start Boca Code. Yeah, I think that that's a great story. And um, I, I want to skip this question to follow down that path because something interesting that comes up in a lot of these interviews is... Um, uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship or starting your own business, do you feel like that ability to take risk or comfortable with with taking risk is that uh, learned or is that innate? Um, 
And how do you feel about oh, that? I would say, I would say learned. I think, I think some people maybe have it innately. Um, I didn't, you know, I was very, I was always very risk averse, especially when I was younger. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, I think, I think a lot of people become more risk averse as they get older. I was a wimpy little kid, you know, I was always scared and timid and was afraid to take, to take risks. And, you know, I realized one day when I was, you know, probably in my thirties that, you know, people, people on their deathbed, they they never are regretting the, the chances they didn't take, you know, or the, I'm sorry, they, they're never regretting the chances they did take, right? You regret those, those leaps of faith you don't take, you know, I could have tried that. What would have happened if I tried that? And so I've, I've, you know, established this philosophy in my, in my, you know, as I've, you know, reached more middle age where, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'll give everything a try, you know, I'll give something a try. And, you know, you, I do have a fail fast mentality, which is important. So, you know, you try it and if it doesn't work, you know, you want to know right away, it's not going to work and, and shift gears. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's important. Uh, and then uh, this is where uh, you either get a, a plus two handicap or, or minus two. We flip a coin here and we find out uh, heads. So you get plus two. So what, what's your superpower? Um, uh, what, what, what are you best at, uh, that, that, uh, that when, when something's going on in Boca code, they, they need Todd. Oof. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to say because I think, you know, I think that if you were to ask people around me, they might come up with different answers. Um, I think, you know, some people in the community might say it's just my perseverance and that hard work and drive. Um, also being able to just, you know, figure things out and puzzle through them. So I don't know what's my, my greatest power. I would say perseverance. That's a good one. It's uh, de definitely, definitely for bit for business owners. Yeah. It would and, be um, interesting to hear what other people thought about that, you know? <laughs> yeah. You can, all, you can always ask him, right? Um, uh, it's always good to get perspective on uh, and know, know know your blind spots. And sometimes yeah. your your superpowers can be blind spots. You might have uh, superpowers that you don't even internalize. Right, um, right, absolutely. And uh, and this is something a lot of small businesses struggle with. That uh, it's always interesting to get perspective on. How do you know when it's the right time to grow to either bring on that additional person or expand to that new location? versus optimizing what you have and, and hunkering down when, when, how, what, what tells you when it's the right time to grow? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is actually, that's the million dollar question right there, I think. And I, you know, I've had to learn this through a lot of trial and error and we, you know, when I had my agency, we kept getting more dev work and we would hire more developers and we'd get more dev work and we hired more developers. But then the sales team was now had all this pressure to make sure we sustained that level of projects. And I think it would have been better for us, like in retrospect, if we had grown a little slower in that business, not brought on so many developers and, you know, just maybe push some of the client projects later on down the line, like, oh, we'll be able to start this project in a month um, and, you know, maybe lost some of the clients maybe upped our prices to lower the demand a little bit um, that, you know, that probably would have been more sustainable in that business. In my business now, what, you know, the, the, there's been, you know, there have definitely been a few moments where I knew I needed, I, I was stretched too thin. My staff was stretched too thin. We needed to bring somebody on, you know, I'm very protective of my staff. So I know they work really hard, but when I see that, you know, we're being stretched too thin and maybe we're not, um, you know, serving our clients as best as we can, then I know it's time to bring someone on. And if I, and then if I bring someone on and it doesn't work, I want, again, it's that fail fast. If you, you hire somebody, you think they're right, you think you need them and it turns out you don't need them or they're not contributing, then, you know, you got to take emotion out of it and just let them go. And I actually had one of my latest investors, he, he had been talking to me about investing for, oh gosh, probably six months. And when he heard that I fired somebody that wasn't really contributing and was kind of being a drag on the company, that's when he decided to invest. 
He's like, now I trust you. You know, now I know you know to right, make the right decisions. And those decisions are always the hardest, but um, you know, we've, we've certainly been on a, on a growing path. We brought on two new instructors, um, you know, just a few weeks ago and we're, we're hiring a community manager now. So, you know, we, we, we're, we're ready to grow and, and we think that community manager will come in and help us, you know, really start recruiting more students and, and taking this to the next level. That's all. I, I think that's really great advice um, and good for people to hear. Um, and I, I like the any business nowadays that's built around community, I think is, is really important. That's, that's um, there's, there's so much power in it. And then uh, do you have any tips uh, uh, for business owners? It's obviously, there's a lot of stress involved. How do you stay uh, physically, mentally healthy, balance your responsibilities with your, you know, being able to make sure you don't, you don't fall over? Well, I don't think that I'm exactly like the picture of physical health, but you know, I definitely try and 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 keep keep calm whenever I can. I think what the most important thing is when you, as soon as you start to feel overwhelmed, as soon as which happens, right? We take on, we wear so many hats as entrepreneurs, you know, um, and and we try and do everything ourselves. And as soon as you start, you get to a point where you just are, you notice you have to be, you have to watch yourself, you have to pay attention. And as soon as you you feel yourself slipping past your your point where where you're starting to feel uncomfortable with how much work you have and how much you're taking on, that's when it's time to maybe farm some of that work out, share the load with your team. You know, I had uh, one of the things we went through in the past year was obtaining our our license from the state. And I had one night where I couldn't sleep. I was so stressed. I had, I was talking to investors, trying to recruit students, working on curriculum, teaching, and trying to work on this like impossible puzzle of salt that that the state gives you to solve of of trying to get a license as a school. And you know, I I, I had this thought at like three in the morning of man, somebody could make a career out of helping people get these licenses. And that thought led to, I wonder if there is someone, and if there is, I'm going to hire them. <laughs> and <laughs> so web search turned up one guy and he works in like, for like six different States, one of which was Florida. I immediately reached out to him, hired him immediately. And, you know, he, and, and, and I ended up having to hire a CPA and a lawyer and, you know, but it took a, you know, so I spent more money than I would have liked to in the process but I don't know that I would have mentally survived if I, if I didn't. Yeah. I, th I think that, uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. We, we did something similar with our regulatory license. We phoned a friend and, uh, yeah. it, it was, it was definitely helpful. Um, got to bring I, in help. Got to bring yeah, in help. Great. So then here's where you give advice to your former self only in one category. So we, we roll a dice here. You get a, a three, so uh, hiring, it's, it's kind of uh, related to uh, the advice that you gave before. If you want to pick another category, uh, you can. Uh, but do you have any advice on, 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 um, on what you look for when you, when you bring someone on? What, what characteristics are you looking for? Yeah, you know, something that, you know, you say to my younger self, and I think I, think I knew this, this going in, but having somebody who's, who's passionate about what you're doing, um, the, to me, the ideal candidates, the best candidates that I've ever hired were ones who, who I knew before even, before even really interviewing them that they were passionate about what I was doing, whether it was my agency or book of code in this case, and that our goals aligned and our, our ethics aligned um, those are, those tend to be your best hires. You know, you could, you know, people, people are trainable. People can learn to do the job. Um, you know, some, in some cases you just need somebody who has a skill set that you don't have. And in some cases you just need somebody to be an extra set of hands. And when, you know, the last couple of, the last couple of people I've hired they're I don't have to tell them what to do. They're just doing it. And those are the best hires when you're an entrepreneur and you're, you're trying, you don't want to have to manage your staff. And if your staff can manage themselves and they can pick up the balls 
and, and anything I drop, they're picking it up and taking it and running. And they're coming to me saying, you know, we should be doing this and we should be doing that. And I say, great, do that and do that and give them that autonomy. And, you know, they're doing things I wouldn't have thought to do. They're doing things and on top of their regular job. And it's, it's incredible that. Yeah. That's a hard lesson for, for a lot of business owners to learn. And I think, I think that's the difference between being able to have one shop versus, you know, m- multiple. Um, yeah. But I think that's those are, those aren't the easiest people to find though. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> but if you're doing something really cool and you're doing something that people really value, and like you said, community based, then, then they, they tend to flock to you. Awesome. Uh, and then, uh, so, so we're, we're, we're at the end here. Uh, this is where you, you, you encounter the dragon at the, at the end of every episode. So you got plus two before, and we roll a 20-sided die. Tell me when to stop. Oh, stop. Oh, you got a perfect 20. So we're, right? we're going we're gonna to send you $100 to invest in a campaign on my venture. Nice. Uh, you can, so full disclosure, Todd has a campaign on my venture. You can't invest in your own campaign. You have to support another entrepreneur on the platform. Excellent. <laughs> and, can uh, I split it between? Can I split it between two? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, great. And uh, and thank you so much for coming on uh, the show. And then uh, just tell people a little bit more. I think you know our audience is a mix of business owners, but also a lot of uh, investors, millennials, all different age ranges in the age range that you talked about. Tell them a little bit more about how to find you. Um, and if they're considering a career change, like, you know, tell, tell them a little bit more about that before you go. Well, first, as somebody who went through a career change in my 30s, don't be scared. Making that leap is, is scary, but it's the best decision you'll ever make. I've, I've talked to hundreds of people who've made that leap. And I, you know, it's rare to find one that regrets it. Um, we're very easy to find bocacode.com and you can reach out to me, Todd at bocacode.com, T O D D at bocacode.com. And, uh, you know, we're, we're easy to find, reach out, you know, we'll set up a meeting. We can, we can chat and, uh, you know, tell you, tell you more about the company, tell you more about the opportunities and man, there is just a ton of jobs out here for software engineers. So if you're looking or you're, you're looking for a career change, it's an awesome option. And I'll tell you, our students are loving it, having so much fun. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's a fun job and you make good money. Awesome. Well, Dane, thank you so much for your time. And uh, thank you, we'll, Jason. We'll, we'll, we'll see you soon.